Okay, now that we have seen how scaling functions work and how you can form an orthonormal basis at different scales using the scaling function. Let me introduce what the Haar wavelet is and, 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 and what is its significance. So, before we begin let us start with a motivation to the problem. Say we wanted to isolate a short burst or spike or what we may think of as a high frequency change. We need a tool to isolate the spike belonging to some space V j, but not a member of the space v j minus 1. Why? Because we have to recall that space v j minus 1 is contained in v j right because when j increases we are at better resolution. Now with this in mind we start with the idea. So, what is the idea? We need to apply the notion of direct sum spaces that is we need to decompose v j as a sum of v j minus 1 and it is orthogonal complement and we have seen all these ideas in our lectures on signal geometry that is take the space v j decompose this space into some v j minus 1 and its orthogonal complement right. And what we mean is v j minus 1 and this other space their orthogonal complements of, of each other right. And the original space vj is basically decomposed into these these two spaces now let us start with our uh, intuition and and begin this intuition and starting step consider the space v 1 we need to identify a space which is say w 0 that is
the orthogonal complement of B0 with the following properties. Now, if some psi belongs to V 1, this implies psi of t can be written as some linear combination of the basis in V 1 and the basis in V 1 using our scaling functions, we can write them as uh, A L times phi of 2 t minus L. Right for some A L belonging to some real numbers. Now, psi is orthogonal to V naught because that is how we started, right? We want to write V one in terms of decomposition of two subspaces. So, what would this mean? This implies integral of psi of t with phi of t minus k. This has to be 0 for every k belonging to set of integers. Okay. So, we start with the space V 1, we need to identify a space W 0 which is an orthogonal complement of the space V 0 satisfying the following properties. Right? When psi belongs to V 1, you can say psi can be expanded using the orthonormal basis in V 1 and we said psi is orthogonal to V 0. Therefore, and we know the basis for V 0 would be these functions phi of t minus k. So, therefore, this function psi with phi of t minus k this this product inner product has to be 0 for all k belonging to set of integers. Let us see how this can be done. So, we can construct psi from a set of box functions of width one half and its translates right we can start with the box function of width one half and its translates so if we need this condition minus infinity to plus infinity some psi of t with phi of t dt equals 0 if this condition has to be satisfied let us look at the trivial case of k equals 0 from our second condition right. So, phi of t minus k I said phi of t where k equals 0. Okay, if this has to be satisfied a simple psi of t can be of the form psi of t is phi of 2 t minus phi of 2 times t minus half. Let us get the picture here right if we just sketch this
this is 1 and say this is minus 1 here. This definitely is orthogonal to phi of t which is which is this. You take the inner product of this with this, so you get 1 and then this is minus 1, it cancels. So, this is basically I would write this as orthogonal to this. Now, what this means? psi of t is orthogonal to phi of t. Therefore, psi of t belongs to the space v 1 and psi of t belongs to v 0. Right, psi of t belongs to v 0. because this space and psi of t belongs um, um, to w I mean w 0 I, I would say not v, v 1 I think this is a this is a typo here. So, this should be um, v 1 complement orthogonal complement or it belongs to space uh, sorry, I think um, I think I have to I made a small chain mistake here. So, psi of t belongs to v 0 because v 0 can be written as v 1 plus w 0 right. v 0 uh, so, v, v we start with the space v 1 v 1 this was written as some v 0 direct sum with w 0. So, basically it does not belong to v 0 right psi of t belongs to v 1 and psi of t belongs to w 0. Okay. So, it belongs to w 0 space because it is orthogonal complement of v 0 and it belongs to the original space v 1 because v 1 has discontinuities at plus minus half plus minus 1 and so on. Okay. So, thus w 0 has all functions of the form sigma a k psi of t minus k k belonging to the set of integers and all these a k's are real numbers. Why? If you sort of look at the time translates, so if you have one function which is like this 0 half and 1 and another function which is shift this function by one more time step. right. So, this is 1, 1 and a half right. So, this is 1, this is minus 1, this is 1, this is minus 1. 
these two functions are basically orthogonal to each other. And you can expand this space w 0 using all functions of this form in general where this shift orthonormality holds starting with this function psi t and we call psi t as the wavelet function. Okay. So, now we saw that we can expand a function using the appropriate basis functions in an appropriate space, in an appropriate subspace you can expand the function using the basis for that subspace and any particular subspace can be decomposed into two subspaces which are orthogonal complements of each other. Okay, that is the sort of the intuition where we have and then we are now ready to discuss a general form and I will state this as a theorem and then we can go ahead in the uh, go ahead with the proof in the next class. So, let us generalize this into a theorem. The statement of the theorem as is as follows. Let w j be the space of all functions such that sigma k belonging to set of integers a k that you can expand the function in this form that is you are looking at the time trans scaled and the time translates of the wavelet function. A k belonging to real numbers. The first property is W j if this is so, if W j is a space of all functions such that this holds right, then W j is the orthogonal complement of v j in v j plus 1 and you can write v j plus 1 as the direct sum of two spaces which is v j and w j. So, this is the statement of the theorem that means we have to prove both these properties. Okay. So, if you are clear with the intuition we had in the last step how we were able to decompose v 1 into v 0 direct sum with w 0 we can we can just immediately proceed towards proving this theorem. So, there are a few details so, we will do this in the next next class.